hello, hello. Hi, everyone. How's breakouts? How you doing? Long time no see. Thumbs up. We are so excited for tonight. As you can see, I have these lovely people behind me. Um, they're going to introduce themselves in a little bit. But tonight, we're having a panel, and we're talking about relationships in our series. Can you relate? We've been going through... All, um, we're starting with some of the commandments God gives us in our relationships. And tonight we're talking about love. Um, and you might be sitting here and you're like, I don't really, I don't want a relationship. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just focused on me. You may be thinking, I am already in a relationship and we're perfect. And all right, we'll talk about that too. But this is for you because we're all called to relationships, whether you want it or not. You are in a relationship with the person next to you. You're in a friendship. You're in a relationship. And whatever that may look for you in the future, um, it's an important topic. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it because God talks about love because he is love. And that is our theme verse of this whole series, which we're going to read together right now to get started which is, read it with me, I can't see it. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you together. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Incredible. You guys will work on the repeating thing, but that's okay. We are going to get into our panel and we're going to go around and introduce ourselves to start and we have a fun little question to take us back to our high school days and that question is if you could go back and give your high school self relationship advice what would you tell them what would you tell little you you want to start yeah uh, I'm JC and for this question I would say um, don't overthink it I tend to overthink things, and I have ever since I was younger. Um, and so I would just say, listen to your gut feeling, because we all have one. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict, and sometimes that conviction feels like your gut feeling. So when you feel a gut feeling, try not to overthink it and just be like, okay, this is what I'm feeling, and go with that decision. And usually that decision is um, the right choice. So yeah, don't overthink it. It's simpler than you think. I'm Emma. Um, if I could go back to my high school self, I would just say be you. Don't be anybody that the person you're dating wants you to be or don't be anybody different. Don't, don't change yourself because God made you exactly who you're supposed to be. He made you unique and authentic, and that's what's going to last. Yeah. Do you guys want to tell each, us who you guys are and about your relationship a little bit? And Okay. Well, I'm Emma, and this is JC. We've been dating for a year and a half, and we actually met here at Revive um, at the Young Adult Ministry. I know, so cute. <laughs> um, we both kind of grew up in the church, and we've gotten to both volunteer at Revive and um, just kind of grow our relationship not only with ourselves but um, with God and um, at Revive and here at this church. It's been pretty incredible. Yeah. Whoosh. Amazing. Um, I'm Marissa. Oh, <laughs> this is my husband, Jacob. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, he'll introduce himself in a little bit. Um, we met our freshman year of college uh, a bit ago. We've been together for three and a half years. Three and a half years. That was weird. And we've been married for 47 days. So, thank you, thank you. Um... My piece of advice I would give my high school self is kind of the same as Emma, but to just not try to be what everyone else wants you to be or what you think that they want you to be or what you think you should be for that person or for that friendship or whatever it may be. Uh, to be yourself and learn more about yourself and keep chasing after Jesus because that's where you're going to find who you are and that will lead you to your person. So here he is. Take it away. Hi, I'm Jacob, uh, Marissa's person, as she said. Um, so if I could go back to high school and tell myself one thing, it would be just like take it slow and be patient. I think it's really easy in high school to get wrapped up in what your friends are doing, whether it be dating or maybe being so involved in sports, they have no time for anything else, like coming to stuff like this. And so I think it's really important, especially in relationships, to take it patient and um, just not rush things in high school. It's be much better to take, uh, take a step back and kind of look at your situation and kind of think about it in the future um, how you want things to play out and just kind of think about 
uh, what you're going to be like in the future and the people that you surround yourself with and potentially date, how they impact that future as well. All right, so we're the not so newlyweds. Uh, my name is Stephanie Mason. This is Pastor Ben. Uh, we have been married for over 20 years now. Woo, woo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, needless to say, we were high school sweethearts. Aww. Started dating our junior year, never broke up. Yep, that's what we always, we look for that. That, oh. It gets worse. It gets super sappy. We did start off at Friends, which I highly recommend. But we met in chemistry class and then started dating later on and never stopped. So we love each other very much. And we are so excited and honored to be here. Uh, so obviously, it was a long time ago. Like, we graduated in 98, people. So, like, high school was a long time ago. But I also think that it hasn't changed a whole lot. And I kind of feel like a theme here with the ladies because we haven't talked about the answers to these questions. But I feel very similar. In high school, um, I struggled a lot, especially with things like self-esteem. And so I really found all of my value and worth as a person in other people. And as much as other people are amazing, they will always disappoint. So I just really want to encourage you, just like Nick was saying, we're all sinners, right? That's why we disappoint each other. But what I want to encourage you is to know that you are valuable, you are lovable, and you are so, so worth it. So do your best to know your value when you enter into a relationship. Isn't she great, everybody? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Um, like she said, uh, my name is Pastor Ben. Um, if I think back to what I would say to me when I was in high school, I would probably say, keep your hands where I can see them and look at the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when in relation to relationships. No? Isn't that a little awkward? I'm, I always make it a little awkward. Okay. Uh, now, with a uh, relationship... I want you to understand um, your insecurities. Uh, the things that made us struggle in relationship had to do a lot with my insecurities. Hers too, but you have to deal with your own insecurities. You can't change anybody else. But if you work on your insecurities, that's the way that you can have the best relationship possible. You don't attract what you want. You think about, okay, well, like, what, what's the person that I want? How do I get the person that I want? You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. You attract something, somebody that correlates with your trauma, with, with your hang-ups, with your insecurities. So as you think about having a good relationship, the best way you can have a good relationship is be the best version of you. And a key central part of that is your faith in Christ. That's some good stuff. It's our first question, and that was amazing. Um, yay. Uh, the next topic we're going to ask Pastor Ben to kind of start us off with this is, what is the difference between lust and attraction? Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a, I'm going to tell a story about our daughter is named Lydia, right? And she's nine now. But I wanted to go back to when she was like three or four. And uh, we're not like green thumb people. We don't have uh, the ability to grow things very well. I know Pastor Nick loves growing things. We can grow weeds. That's about it. But the people that own the house that uh, we live in before us we're really good with flowers. And say so they plant all these flowers. I don't know the name of it. I don't, don't do anything to take care of, but they grow back every spring. And Lydia would see these flowers, these beautiful flowers, and as soon as she saw one, she wanted to pick it. Because she wanted to take it. She wanted to put it in her room. And the thing was, like, the yard looked great until Lydia came through. And every single, like, the very day that something would bloom, Lydia would pick it. Right? And... You're like, what does this have to do with any of this? This is exactly the difference between lust and attraction. Attraction is the willingness to admire something, 
to, to look at something and give thanks to your creator who made it. You see, every single one of you, like we talked about being your authentic self, like there's a lot of people saying that, and it just means do whatever you think is best. But instead, like the Christian version of that is to say, God made me and God didn't make a mistake. Did you know that God made you? And did you know that God didn't make junk? God didn't make a mistake? Like if you think about the person that you're lusting after, if that's where your heart's at, the way that you lust makes that person less of a person and more into an object. It's like plucking a flower that had the ability to grow, that had the ability to, to last a lot longer than it would have, right? You take that thing for yourself, and then that thing is diminished, right? When, when you lust after someone, you make that person into an object. Uh, um, porn kills love. Porn kills people. Lust Lust makes people into things, into products that we can consume. But people aren't products. And, and the way that we, uh, you know, pass around pictures of your classmates, if that's what happens, it, the way that you, uh, you know, speak about uh, the, the girls at your, at your class or the, the boys at your class, uh, there's a lot of ways that we can sometimes make people into things. They're, they're things that we, we would use or would want to use for our own gratification, but, but that, that minimizes, that shrinks the beauty of what's actually there. So for Lydia, she didn't have, a, she didn't have the wisdom to really let the flower grow. But when you admire something, you see the way that it points to something bigger than itself. It points to the creator, Right, and and if you uh, if you're uh, being attracted to someone, it's about being in control of your thoughts. And we can th- talk about that in the next question or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any anything to add? Yeah. So I would say that, like lust is definitely that, that one like punch in the face when you see someone that's super attractive, and then it only goes downhill from there. You know, whereas attraction is something that you know maybe starts off pretty strong, but it only builds from there. So eventually. Everyone grows old. You know, it's a fact of life. So hopefully... Hey, I feel like that was directed at me. No, I'm not. It's just 98 was a long time ago. Just saying. You guys, like, weren't even born. (laughs) Nope. No one in this room was. Um, Yeah, so I would just say focusing on that attraction, especially now, is so important to look beyond just someone's body and look into their mind to kind of see, like, the qualities that they have that you admire and just making sure that your attraction to them is more than just surface level. Yeah, if, if you're looking at porn or you think about what that person likes or you think about the way that person has a family and a story, if, if you're lusting after someone, that person stops being three-dimensional in a way. They, they're just their looks. They're just what you can use them for. It has nothing to do with the complexity of the person. They lose their history. They lose their story. They lose all the things that make them them. Yeah, so kind of going off of that, because lust is a sin, and it's something that we all struggle or have struggled or will struggle with. Um, so how do we avoid those sexual temptations? How do we realistically avoid that and lusting and all that that has to do with anything? Yeah, so I, I really like what Jacob said about the difference between lust and attraction. Attraction does grow, and but it's like the the plants that if you pluck them, it won't, right? If lust is like the plant that you pluck and it won't continue to grow, but attraction can grow over time, and your your sat- satisfaction in your relationship will grow as you wait for the things until the time when those things are ripe, until they're ready. If you pluck a fruit before it's ripe, it's never gonna grow ripe. If if you think about the ways that God talks about and design sex. And all these things matter, okay? So how do we keep from lusting? And, and the first thing I want you to see, if you go to the next slide, is how can someone in, in high school today realistically avoid sexual sins? And that's what you're talking about. Like, you first have to realize that it is realistic. It's not easy. But quit lying to yourself. Quit letting people lie to you and say that it's impossible. Right? Because God asks this of you. 
So if God asks us of you, this is, we, we, we talked and prayed and, and sang about how God is love, right? It's about trusting the one that loves you to know that what he wants for you is best, even when you don't understand it, and even when it's really difficult. So how do you, re- how do you realistically avoid it? I'm going to take you to Martin Luther, okay? Uh, We're in Lutheran church, so I'm going to quote Martin Luther every once in a while. Martin Luther said about lust, he said, I can't keep the beautiful birds from flying over my head. You're like, okay, this is like the flower thing. I don't know where this is going. But I can keep the birds from building a nest in my hair. Okay, did you get what I, uh, I can't keep the birds from flying over my head, but I can keep them from building a nest in my hair. Right? If you let the thing happen, if you, if you let the thoughts continue, if you let the train of thought go where the train of thought's going to go, if you just th- let things take their natural course, their natural course, what you end up happening is, is you, you, you just let things happen however they'll happen. And, and that's not the path to a better life. You have to be really intentional. Be mindful of your thoughts. What we're talking about is our thoughts. And, and so and to take it back to our passage from Matthew 5, he says, Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Okay? He says, cut it off at the root. Like if, the, if there's something in your life that's causing you to struggle, stop doing that thing. And uh, if, if, you know, we are talking about beforehand, I don't want to steal my wife's answer, but, you know, if... If having your phone in your room it makes it really hard to not look at things that make you think lustful thoughts, don't have your phone in your room. If, if hanging out with certain people uh, puts you in a place to where you have more conversations about people that you're attracted to in ways that are lustful and degrading, don't hang around with those people. Uh, when, when you think about... Uh, these things, they are realistic, but it, it all starts with your mind. Be careful of your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Be careful of your words. Your words become your actions. Be careful, careful of your actions. Your actions become your habits. Be careful of your habits. Your habits become your character. So the world tells us that lust and sex outside of sin is only natural. Sex outside of marriage, not sex outside of sin. I like sex outside of sin. It's a good thing. Uh, sex outside of marriage is, is, that's just a natural course. Why wouldn't you do that? And I just think that is, that's a lie that we believe. I think it would be better to look to the God who created it, right? If you... Um, if you want to know what something's for, I found a, I, I found a bag of tools, okay, uh, on the side of the road, and I like woodworking, and I'm like, sweet, a bag of tools this is awesome. And I knew what some of the tools were, but some of them, I'm like, I don't even know what this tool is. I don't know what it does. And so you look at it, and it's kind of like a fun puzzle to figure out what this weird tool does. And what it was was a, a pulley puller. I can try to say that 10 times fast. A pulley puller. And I didn't know what it was until, you know, I figured out. And you looked up the manufacturer. You looked up the one that made it. And you looked at what they make, right, because I research things. And then when you look at the manufacturer, and then it shows you how the tool is designed for a certain thing. And that thing that it's designed for is really good. The, the tool likes to be used for the thing that it was designed for. And you can use that as a sexual euphemism if you want. I don't care. The tool likes to be used for the thing that it was designed for. But the thing that it was designed for is... You're just catching that on. Yeah, like you see what I did there? Um, the research that totally secular uh, researchers and scientists have come to the conclusion that sex and marriage is the best sex. That sex before marriage... Couples that live together before they're married are less likely to be happy. They're less likely for their relationship to last. They're less likely to have healthy uh, relationships with their kids. There's more, they're more likely to have abuse. The, the longer you live together before you're married, and obviously this is related to the sex question, the more likely and the quicker your divorce will happen. And so when you take a step back from these things, 
We can see the way that God's design. You look at the manufacturer and you listen to the manufacturer to understand what the tool's for, and then you can really use that tool for the right thing. So you said a lot, and that's great. It was all very good. (laughs) Uh, And, yeah, some of the things are are stuff that Ben and I talked about a little bit when we were um, talking about this topic just in general. And I would say, too, like, be each other's teammate, right? Because it is hard, and our culture is obsessed with sex, and you cannot escape it. And so with that in mind, you have to give yourself a little bit of grace, but you also have to know, like, you need allies. You can't do it alone. You want to surround yourself with people that are going to support you and help you. Um, yeah, and believe in you, absolutely, and, and work with you through those thoughts to make sure that your thoughts don't control your actions. Yeah, <laughs> do you want the microphone back? <laughs> he said you have to be honest with yourself. All of these things are really good. So you want to look to each other as, as teammates against, uh, against the world in some ways, against their views, against what they want you to do, knowing that what they want isn't always the right thing. And when it's not the right thing, you want to come together as allies so that you can fight against that to make sure we do do the right thing as much as we can. Yeah, this is all so great. We have lots of questions to get to, so we're going to move on to the next one. I don't want to monopolize today. <laughs> you got great answers. Uh, <laughs> is there a healthy way for someone who is already in a relationship to have a relationship with someone else who is the gender that they would be attracted to? So it, would it be healthy for me to have a friendship with another guy? What would that look like, and how can that be a healthy thing? You guys want to go? Uh, I would say hanging out with that opposite gender alone when you're in a relationship can be really tricky because it's kind of like hanging the apple in front of you and expecting not to eat it because you're just exposing yourself to that temptation It's really, really hard. We're all human. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And just when we think we're strong and we're strong-willed and we won't give in, stuff happens, and then, you know, you regret the decision. So I would would say, there you go. She likes it. Um, Yeah, I would just say um, don't hang out with that person alone. And when you're going into a relationship, I would talk to that significant other about hanging out with another friend of the opposite sex if you really want to hang out with that person, if you guys have been friends since you were little kids, if you still want to hang out with them. But that's something that needs to be talked about because that can bring up a lot of jealousy and tension. So just bring that up in the beginning. Yeah, and, like, it's not bad to have those friendships, but something so special about friendships and being in a relationship is that you get to add friendships to your life. And, like, Jacob's friends have become my friends, and my friends have become his friends, and we get to hang out together and spend time together, and we get to spend time together, we get to spend time with our friends, Um, and like you were saying, it all comes down to communicating with one another. Uh, Yeah, communication is key in that, and be friends with each other's friends, because that's fun, but do it in a healthy way, with each other. And Real quick, and this might be when you get maybe a little bit older, but I think it can apply in high school too. You, your relationship changes the order of things, right? So you got to be careful. Communication is super important. But if you're running to your friends about something that's about your significant other, that can be really tricky and really hairy. It's very important that this person comes first and those people have their place. So sometimes that causes rearranging that order so you know who you need to talk to first before you talk to somebody else. Yeah, anyone else? Sweet. Let's move on to the next one, which how do, oh, nope, nope. Um, what are, oh, this is again, yeah, this is a fun one. What are some signs that someone is or is not worth dating in high school? What are those red flags? How do we know what to avoid? Oh, love this question. <laughs> They don't love Jesus. If they don't love Jesus, don't give them any time at all. No. Um, 
Seriously, they should love Jesus. Uh, when, when, uh, when I explain this to pre-married couples, like, your relationship with God comes first. Does your partner know how many hairs you have in your head? No, God does. What does, you, does the person that you're attracted to know your inmost thoughts even better than you do? No. Your most intimate relationship was with God. Jesus says, love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you're with somebody that doesn't love God and doesn't love themselves, they're not going to love you well. Now, if they love God and themselves, they really love God and themselves in that order, they will love you well. But if they're not in that place, they're not going to love you well. A lot of people... and. This is true for us. Like, there was insecurities in our relationship because of my, my insecurities. I was jealous about certain things I should have been jealous of. Uh, and I, I responded in a really pretty toxic way to Steph in some ways. Uh, and we worked through it. Just because it doesn't, isn't what it should be doesn't mean you can't work it through. But at the same time, like, there's, there's serious red flags. And, and in that space... It was me working through my insecurities and her working through her insecurities to be the best versions of ourselves and loving ourselves because God loves us, not because I just love myself and I'm so enamored with myself. It has to be the love of God first. But as you do that well, it will change the way that you do relationship. And so uh, remember back to what I said before. You don't attract what you want, but you attract what you are. If you haven't worked on yourself... You'll probably attract somebody who hasn't worked on themselves. And then that's not, probably not somebody you should be dating. You want to I think to piggyback off of that as well, like Jesus does such a beautiful job with um, showing what a good relationship is with how he ha- is in a relationship with the church and how he's constantly serving the church and serving people. And that is how you love someone best. So if you are serving that person in high school, but they are not serving back and it's not a two-way street, then I would say that is like a total red flag and that is worth thinking about for sure. (laughs) Yeah, and I would say that just thinking out in the future, right, there are two results of dating someone. Either you're going to break up or you're going to marry them. And (laughs) so it's really important to think about the qualities that that person has and and say to yourself, can I live with some of those issues? Can we work through some of those issues? Or are they just a jerk and I shouldn't date them? Um, it's just, yeah, beginning with the end in mind is really important here. Because, again, you will break up or you will get married. There's not really in between. So just keep that in mind. Tell it how it is. Um, going off of what Ben was saying about you, or you attract who you are, um, thinking about for yourself, who are you spending your time with? Who is the person that you're interested spending who are they spending their time with? There's a study, I, whatever you call it, where you are the, you are who your five closest friends are. So you become who you spend your most, most time with. So who is that person spending time with? Who are you spending time with? Are those people who are encouraging you, challenging you, holding you accountable? Um, and thinking about that and thinking that about for yourself, but also for the person that you are interested in. Okay, we have time for- For one more question, uh, which is, how does following Jesus make you better at relationships? I can go. I think you just have the same goal in mind. Like, you both know, like, what you're going after in life, and you both know how you want to live your lives. And so just putting God at the center of that relationship, like, I've seen, like, a triangle where you both are, like, on one side of a triangle. And if you both work closer to God, then you're going to both eat, like, we're closer to each other too. So I think just knowing that if you both are setting your hearts on Jesus first and then each other next, then that is going to um, just help you in your relationship altogether. Uh, first John says this, dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. How does Jesus make relationships better? I'm pretty sure that's it. God showed us how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. 
This is real love. Another translation. This is true love. Everybody wants true love, right? Oh, well, he's about to tell us what true love is. Not that we loved. Not that we loved God. Not that we loved each other. But that God loved us. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And this is true love. It don't look to somebody else to give you what only God can. I think that's a good way. Anyone else? I think that's a good way to wrap it up. God is love, and like knowing God, you're going to learn and know more about love and how to love others and how, what love you deserve. Um, and you're going to feel the amazing love of God, which is the most perfect love. So we're going to end in some prayer. Ben, would you like to pray for us? I would love to. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Um, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Uh, there are a lot of restless hearts in here. Uh, we are looking for love in all the wrong places. God, we, we try to find our identity in what other people think. We try to find our identity in what we have or what we do. We're, we're desperately seeking the answer to the question, am I enough? Am I worthy of love? God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Remind us tonight that your love for us is unconditional and unquestionable. There's nothing we can do to make you love us any more. There's nothing we can do to make you love us any less. God, we let go of the idea that we can somehow be made impure in a way that takes away the good thing that you give us, your love. And God, we let go of the idea that we can seek and find satisfaction in anything but you. Gracious God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We will see you next week at Ignition. And it was so good to, to be together. We love you. You can head out to small groups.